permissions compatible with pre-Windows 2000 servers. Okay, in most cases, and this really makes a case for upgrading your NT 4.0 RAS servers right away, RAS is remote access, um, in most cases we want to make sure that we're selecting this option here, permissions compatible with only Windows 2000 servers. That way we're securing our system, our operating system, as much as we possibly can right from the beginning. Okay, so we don't have any NT 4.0 RAS servers. We're going to select this bottom option and go ahead and click Next. The Directory Services Restore Mode Administrator Password. This is a very important screen here. Okay, and it's very often just neglected and people click Next and go right by this. But I want to make sure that you understand what you have in store here if you do or you don't configure this. Okay, this controls whether or not somebody has direct access to Active Directory. For example, Active Directory can be accessed in a low-level mode called Directory Services Restore Mode. And what you can do is you can restore Active Directory and overwrite previous changes that were made. So if you have a malicious user or malicious administrator who's trying to destroy the Active Directory, they could literally reboot the system and copy a blank Active Directory or a very old version of the Active Directory over the current functioning Active Directory structure on the system. Okay, so what it amounts to for us, two things. Number one, you want to use a password here. Okay, this password should be secured. You really won't be utilizing it too much, okay, which leads to our next issue. If you type in a password here, you got to write it down and store it someplace. And I'm not talking about on a monitor or something, but literally putting it into a locked safe, locked vault, something along those lines, so you can easily get this password back if you have to. Okay, too often I've seen people will just type in any password here, okay, just to get by it for right now. Come back later on when I need to access this and they have no clue what the password is. Okay, so it's very important that you remember this password and that you, you know, write this down and store it in a secure place. Okay, so all those steps. We're going to type in a password of PASS, P-A-S-S, -S, and follow along with the lab. And I'll click Next here. Okay, here we see our summary. Let's take a look at this, make sure everything looks good. The new domain is benandbrady.com. Okay, it's also the name of the new forest. The NetBIOS name of the domain is Ben and Brady. Okay, so it's just Ben and Brady. Neither one of these are case sensitive, by the way. Database location, log file location, sysvol folder location. You always want to make sure that all this information is correct. Because if you make a mistake here, it's not that it's not correctable. It just takes a lot of time, waste your time to really fix that problem. So we'll click Next. And now we see the Active Directory database start writing to the actual... Uh, computer here. So we're going to stop the video right now and when this is done and my system is rebooted we're going to pick up right from where we left off and talk about what we've got when we come back. Okay now we're back up and running but we're sitting on client one at this point. SRV1 has to reboot after you install Active Directory and when it reboots it disconnects the terminal connection. So we're sitting at client one and we're going to connect back over to SRV1 at this point. And we will take a look at something here I want to note as well. Now, it's not a big deal here because it's not going to uh, make a difference either way. But when we start working with domains, you need to click on the Options button because it brings up the Log On To dialog box. And in this particular situation, since this is a domain controller, we can no longer log on locally to this machine. In a couple labs, actually a couple steps down the road here, we're going to take a look at our client machine and our member server and you're going to notice that we have multiple options where it says log on to. And we want to make sure we discuss that so you understand what the difference is between these. Okay, so for right now we're just logging on the same way we always do. Administrator, no password, but this account belongs within the Active Directory domain. It's not a local account anymore. Okay, so I log on here. <clears throat> and we're going to go check out DNS. Let's go take a look at what it actually did. And as I mentioned, DNS is critical. So this is the first thing after you have Active Directory installed. You want to go back in and take a look and see what was actually done automatically for you. We like to do this ahead of time before we even go through the Active Directory wizard. But in this case, you know, just wanted to show you, give you an idea of what we would need to do in this particular case. Okay, so we go to Forward Lookup Zones, and we see that it did indeed create a Forward Lookup Zone. Okay, and a Forward Lookup Zone, if you're not familiar with it, this is where all the host name resolution takes place. So if somebody in the network is looking for srv1.benandbrady.com, 
they go to the DNS server and the DNS server responds back with SRV1's IP address. Okay, so ultimately, don't forget what DNS is for. Resolves host names to IP addresses. Okay, two computers need to communicate using IP addresses, not the names. The names are there so it's easier for us to work with. If we're looking for a resource, I'd much rather look for SRV1 or www 